Hello! Today's review is going to be something new for me and something that's different in flying. It's from Hobby King. It's their Auto G2. This is the improved version of their Auto Gyro which has a startup motor to get the uh, lifting rotors on top spinning before you try to take off. We will uh, open the box and see all the parts. Back with you in a second. Here are the parts as they came in the box from Durafly. We have our main fuselage with the tower. The brushless motor is already mounted. Inside we find a speed controller and a number of wires for the servos. We have the carbon fiber fuselage and we have three controls going to the back. And I'll have to find oh, one's for the tail wheel, one's for elevator, and one is for the rudder. So also included was a tail wheel with a uh, connector rod for steerage. We have three main lifting blades, one of which came attached to the center hub so that you can see how it's done and what direction to line up the others. The main landing gear, nose cone, propeller, the horizontal stabilizer elevator, the vertical stabilizer and rudder, an instruction manual, a screwdriver, some glue, a top piece for the hub, and two extra clevises because I see that I have enough for everything else involved, but two of those. Should be a quick assembly. I'll look at the instructions. I think the first thing I want to do is assemble the main rotor regardless of what they say is the first thing to do. Well, as I suspected, the instructions did not start with the rotors, but I did. I just want to point out that I was sent this battery for the review. It is something you have to purchase separately. It's a Turnigy 1300. The plug on it matches up with the plug on the escape in the, the ESC, rather, electric speed controller inside the fuselage. Now I've attached one rotor blade. One rotor blade came attached. This is the bottom side of the rotor. There is a bottom locking plate into which you put two uh, nuts. There is a top plate. These are strengthening at the rotor. And then your rotor itself goes on the very top. The bolts go through it, through the top part, through here, into the bottom locking part. And I will attach the third rotor and be back with that in a second. But just to get the process started and to bore you all to tears, part one, part two, part three, and this goes on and I use the screwdriver to secure it. Okay, the third lifting rotor has been installed, bolted on. Just want to let you know that you should tighten the bolts firmly as they go down into nuts that are in holders. As you tighten them, the nuts are drawn down and they lock in place. When resistance becomes firm, you should stop. A little bit of Loctite on each screw at the nut will help keep them from coming loose in operation. The uh, rotors, the two that weren't attached, had little plastic protectors on here. I'll take the third one off later. The next step, or the first step per the instructions, is to install the landing gear here in the bottom of the fuselage. They recommend taking the ESC out in order to do that. Turns out they knew what they were talking about. It was necessary to get the ESC out of there because the landing gear wire goes all the way up through the top. The landing gear should be installed so that it's tilting forward, uh, otherwise you will have trouble flying your uh, Auto G2. Now that the landing gear is on, I'm going to put these back into the fuselage. Now the ESC that we had through the front controls the main motor and will power the receiver. But there's a second controller with a plug to power off of the charger mount on the battery and a connector for the receiver and this undoubtedly will power up the motor that is used to start the rotors before you take off. There's also additional wires for the four servos that are involved in controlling the auto gyrocopter. This part of the assembly is sliding the 
horizontal stabilizer onto the control rod. There are two plastic circular mounts. They slide on. The two control rods go underneath. One for the elevator and one will be part of the rudder mechanism steering, controlling the steering wheel. So we will do that next. An up close shot of the uh, tail mounts. They, they slide on after you loosen the screws completely or bolts and then uh, you tighten them. I used pliers to hold the nuts so that I could get them completely tight. Now that this is on, I'm going to skip ahead and add the propeller to the front of the gyrocopter. The propeller slipped right onto the prop shaft. There's a mounting block here held in place with a nut in front, in back and in front. The prop had a spot for the nuts so it fits on and is connected there. And then two nuts go on, which I tightened with pliers, needle nose pliers, so that they're firmly tight. So the propeller's in place. I will put a drop of white glue that they supplied in there and glue on the nose cone. That will complete the front assembly. Now, I will need to put a little white glue on the vertical stabilizer and it glues right in here. There's plastic rails on the holder. I'm not going to put any glue on the shaft at this time because I want to make sure of my alignment. I can always adjust the bottom screws to twist this, but this will firmly secure that. Next item on here is I will be putting a little bit of glue on this plug, which goes back in the back of the uh, carbon fiber rod with the uh, steerable control rod on the proper side and then glue that in place and then all we'll have to do is add the uh, lifting blades to the top right here. The auto gyro is now complete. The tail is glue is drying, the nose glue is drying, the tail wheel butt is drying. When that's all dried, I will connect up the control rods to the uh, tail feathers and uh, steering the tail wheel. I need to push down a little harder on the uh, lifting blade hub and then put on the top piece. But other than that, the assembly is complete in approximately one hour, taking time out to videotape and take some still pictures. The three blade propeller, as stated earlier, was secured with two nuts, then the cover was glued in place. The lifting blades were secured with two nuts above them and then the top piece was screwed on to help secure them in place. There is a slight down angle to the blades as can be seen. That is what is desired. The screw or bolt heads are at the top. The nuts are at the bottom indented in the plastic mounts. Autocopter requires at least five channels. The motor that starts the the gyro spinning requires a fifth channel or sixth channel. I'll be plugging it into my gear channel which is an, an on-off switch basically for it. The battery hatch is held on by the tongue in front and two magnets in back. After finishing assembly of the gyro, gyrocopter, I received a package from China. It had two orange receivers in it that will work with my Spectrum DX7S transmitter. This one will go in the gyrocopter and the second one will go in my next review, the Dynamic S Durafly sailplane.